Hello everyone and welcome back to the series discuss, discussing Enterprise Architect. Uh, I'm joined again today with Steve McGuire. How are you, Stephen? I'm very well today, Tom. Thank you. Oh, that's the way. That's the way. Stephen, I believe today we're looking at uh, creating a document inside Enterprise Architect. That's right, Tom. Many people view Enterprise Architect as a tool to do drawing in, like create UML diagrams and there's a, a massive range of uh, different diagram types. But quite often there are situations where people want to write textual information into the model in, in a kind of a, a form of a document. We had looked at that in the in the specification uh, manager before, but this is like a pure document, the kind of thing that you might do in your word processor. So uh, as always, we're going to look at our perspective. We're going to set the perspective uh, to UML. We've been working in this UML field. So we'll set that and that's already set to that perspective. Let's have a look at uh, how this works. So in our in our toolbox here, I'm going to collapse some of these things and this is open because this is a class diagram. But look at look down here we've got a documents group here. We've got document, custom document, encrypted document, a number of different types uh, of documents. We're going to look at this uh, particular one here, the document, uh, the, the, the vanilla document. And we'll talk a little bit about these other ones. So what we're going to do first is we're going to go to the resources panel of the browser window. And we looked at this a couple of other times before when we created um, some, some information and policies about uh, data access sharing policy and data retention policy. So they, there are documents that are in there, but we want to create now a template for We'll just close that one for a business case. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a business case in Enterprise Architect. But as a pre uh, a pre step for that, we're going to create a template for that, and that might be used for multiple projects. So in this case, we're just going to call it a business case, and we'll say create template, and we'll call it business case. And we may not uh, we may use that for multiple projects. And remembering that the repository can contain multiple projects. So we might be doing a parking meter, urban parking meter system today. We might be doing a social media uh, media integration uh, project at some other time. We're not going to copy any, any templates uh, and we're not going to create a group at the moment. We'll look at that at a later time. So I, if I click on that, I get a blank uh, document and I can uh, start typing in here, you know, urban parking meter uh, system and I'm going to, you know, put a business case there. Now, I want to be able to format uh, this. So I'm going to uh, look at this. I can, if you notice now that the document, uh, the document ribbon has uh, opened up here, the edit ribbon, and we're edit editing a document. Now that pops up automatically when I'm uh, editing this document. Now I can go in and set styles and things, but I'm just going to uh, go in here and uh, I'm going to choose a uh, particular font and let's uh, let's look at uh, this font that we'll put in, and uh, we'll put in a Lucida. I think it's a nice, you know, soft font. Let's look at doing that. Uh, yeah, Lucida handwriting. Here we go. Let's do that, and we can make that a bit bigger. Tom, we'll put that down to uh, 18. We'll change the color of it a little bit as well, and so we can go and create this template. Now, I happen to have. Uh, a template that I've uh, been working on. So I'm just going to uh, copy that from another repository that I have and just paste uh, all of that in. So I've got a logo up there. I've got my urban parking meter system, business case, executive summary, strategic context, proposed solution, all the kind of things that you would have in a uh, in, in a business case. And you're free to, uh, you know, to set that up in the style and the headings that suit your organization. I'm going to save that. Now, as I said, this was a precursor step. What we're going to do now is go back to our project uh, browser. And we, remember, we had, we've had we got requirements model, behavioral models, and structural models. We're going to put another element in here, and we're going to call it business models. And there we have it. And this time, Tom, we're not going to create a diagram. We're going to drag a document directly from the toolbox. I'm going to drag that onto uh, this element there, and I'm going to call it. Um, I'll call it the the parking, the urban parking meter system 
uh, business case. So um, I can do that there by uh, hitting the F2 key or over in the properties window. So that's my new element and it's a document. Now, I want to work on this document, so I'm going to open it up and notice it comes up and says new linked document template. So the formal name for what we created before was a, a, a linked document uh, template. So let's have a look at that. We've got a whole lot of built in ones here, system ones for phased reviews and platform decisions. But there's our friend, the business case that we just created uh, a little while ago. So let's go OK to that. And now we've got we've used our template and we're using it for the urban parking meter system. Now, the 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 template uh, could have had a, a different. There might have been multiple uh, business cases, but it could have had uh, the, a, a placeholder here for the name of your system, for example. So uh, that would be something that we would look at changing in the in the um, in the resources here in the business case template. But we've got our element there, and now we can start uh, to fill this this element out and start to write the things that we want to write about it. But before we do that, let's um, uh, let's put some notes in into this uh, element as well because we've got our uh, project here and we've got our element and it's good practice to put notes in. So we'll put uh, some notes in there and um, and we'll we'll uh, that there. And the other thing we're going to do, Tom, is we're going to put in uh, a stereotype. So we can choose a particular stereotype and let's say business case. So we've got a business case stereotype. It's a type artifact um, in it goes there. And now our element um, is there. Now we can we can now work on this in a normal like you would in your normal uh, favorite word processor. We can start putting in, you know, uh, executive uh, summaries and things in there. Let me just close that uh, for a minute and let me get that one. So I can uh, I can fill in the ex executive summary there and start you know just working in an, in like in a, a, a browser and there that uh, text is going in now I'm going to uh, I'm going to grab some things that I've already done on this parking meter Tom and I'm just going to put all that information in save us looking at uh, looking that in in detail it's not that interesting to see me uh, filling out this all this document, but here it is. It's filled out. We've got all the kind of things you'd expect in an urban parking meter system. Executive summary, strategic context, you know, business benefits, financial, operational things, um, you know, ongoing costs, mitigation. A very rich document right here inside Enterprise Architect. So how would we, how do we relate this to the rest of our, our model? So we've got uh, our model here, and this business case is sitting by itself. And what we, as always, want to do, Tom, is we want to try and articulate our model. We don't just want elements that are sitting by themselves. Uh, and that can happen, obviously, if you do this in a, uh, in a word processor. It's not going to be connected to diagrams or other elements and things. But the power of Enterprise Architect is this ability to be able to integrate the different views, the different, uh, the, the different elements that are important to different stakeholders. So what we're going to do is I'm going to unlock this. We have this uh, we had this lock because we didn't uh, want people looking changing this before, but let's uh, turn those locks off. And let's create another diagram in here and let's call it. Let's call it uh, the requirements to business uh, case. So we'll create another diagram. We use our friend the toolbar on the browser there and it's going to be let's it's going to be a different type of diagram. It's going to be a requirements diagram. So we can go in here and say requirements. So even though I had that perspective set, I can change it as I'm working. And there we have that. And I'm going to change the name of the diagram to be uh, requirements model times business case. So the times is just saying uh, they're the things that are involved in this. I can move that down a little bit in the in the browser window. The diagram's open there. And now I'm free just to drag my elements on. Let's drag this one on. And and let's just reshape that a little bit. And let's put on uh, some other elements to that that it's related to. So we'll say it's related to the display panel, and also let's make it uh, related to the uh, book uh, session. Where are we? Main main book session. Uh, there we, uh, we go. And you know, let's do a couple of other other things here. 
we haven't looked at this before, but our properties window has got different compartments. One of them, or different panels, one of them is the compartments panel. And uh, what I can do here is select the things that I want to be displayed. In this case, I want the notes to be displayed. So there they are. Using the alignment things, I can do that, that um, get these guys lined up. And I'm going to trace these elements uh, from here, from the requirement, and it traces back to the business case. So what we don't want, Tom, when we're doing a project, obviously, is you know scope creep or people doing uh, you know, putting bells and whistles on things that uh, shouldn't be. So what we want to do is trace all these things back to uh, all the requirements back to that business case. No, so it's inter interesting that you can actually uh, link in your model elements to documents uh, as a direct, a direct line, a direct connection there. Yeah, and you know, th that's one of the reasons why I think this video is is a, a really useful thing for people to see. Most people that I see modeling in my consulting work don't use these kind of elements, and I think it's incredibly powerful because, as you say, in a in your favorite word processor, it's not very easy to you know link up a a diagram that you've got in your uh, in in some sort of vanilla drawing package. So they they, re they remain unconnected. Whereas in Enterprise Architect, the game is all about connecting all the elements together. And so it raises them. raises the question then, doesn't it? Like I've been obviously working for for years. I have a, a massive library of documents built up outside of Enterprise Architect. Is there yeah. any way that I can sort of start linking them into the, my models uh, in their current form? Yeah, great question, Tom. Uh, if you were just to open your favorite file explorer and drag any of those documents onto the canvas, uh, you have the option then of uh, relating those to a, a, relating them as an external element or external document or um, bringing them internally into Enterprise Architect. And that's across the board. It, it doesn't matter whether it's a, like an MP4 or an uh, Excel spreadsheet or uh, you know a, a, a Word document, whatever, whatever you wanted to bring in, you can drag it in and then start relating it to uh, the elements in your model. So I could, I could have video inside my model that, that get realized by requirements and things like that. Absolutely, Tom. And you know, look, there are many situations where business analysts that, uh, that do work often record videos of how something's working. So I, I remember working on a medical system and they wanted to look at how the centrifuge uh, was working in relation to some of the other equipment. And they took a video of it uh, and that was going to be inform their requirements. So uh, they put that video and then, and it was an incredibly powerful thing. Anyone that was looking at the requirement for the centrifuge could just look at this particular video and see how the lab technicians were working on it. Yeah, interesting, interesting. Oh, that, that's yeah. really cool. Yeah, so uh, that's uh, that. I just want to say one more thing about that. We did a business case, Tom, but you know it could have been any document at all, anything that you wanted uh, to relate to any model. It doesn't have to be requirements. It could have been, it could have been something of a, a detailed deployment specification or a de detailed component uh, specification, and you can relate any of the other elements like components and deployments and things and, and nodes. Uh, to that element. And remember, we we said we mentioned this in the beginning, we're not going to uh, touch it today, but there are all sorts of other things, custom documents, encrypted documents. So you might have the case where, uh, you know, there's information that's very sensitive and you can password protect that inside the model so that no one else uh, other than people with the authority can actually look at the contents of that. Mm. So uh, I guess you could also link documents to other documents as well. So if you, if you had different versions of a policy that it migrated over time, you could almost visualize that flow and, and keep a history of that too, couldn't you? Yeah, that's right, Tom. That's another, uh, you know, another very useful scenario with the document. Very cool. So Stephen, just, uh, can you open up the document again for me? Certainly. Uh, traditionally, uh, documents in, in traditional word processing tools that look a little bit different, like they have rulers and, and page borders. Can you show me how to configure that if, if that's even possible? It's certainly possible, Tom, and our favorite feature, the right mouse click here, we can look at a number of different options there. The document one uh, has got a number of options underneath it, but the, the one that you want to look at to do that is the view one, which is I'll put it into page layout mode, and that creates uh, these in pages. And you can see all the page breaks there as we uh, move down. So, you know, there are lots and lots of other options that we could explore there, Tom, as well. 
under that we can look at uh, horizontal rulers, um, vertical rulers, again in our view, paragraph markers, uh, all sorts of things there. The other thing that people may not realise is that we have track changes as well. So we can uh, we can um, turn track changes on, find next, find uh, previous, accept all changes, all of those kind of things. Uh, and the other useful thing, Tom, is is the ability to comment on something. So you know we may look at this and we might say, look, this aging infrastructure, you know, that is a bit of a contentious point. And so we can uh, look at that, right mouse click on here uh, again, and um, we can look at uh, these, uh, we can look at this comment here, apply a, a comment. So, you know, we could say um, the, you know, infrastructure has variable, uh, you know, variable age, ages and so you know we could write that kind of comment who's the author it's Stephen you know that's my initial there that's already set for me and apply that and you can see now uh, that that comment uh, is highlighted inside the document so all of the kind of things that you would expect to find in a in your favorite word processor Tom are pretty much available here interesting yeah I can see a, a really uh, I guess compelling use case if if you were reviewing a document between multiple team members but the document was contained within the model it seems like a much more secure way of uh, sharing that sort of information. Yeah, look, look, absolutely. And especially when the the document is related very closely to uh, the model, it, it just seems like a very obvious thing to do to include it inside uh, the repository. So uh, a powerful feature, Tom, and, and, you know, I'd leave it up to the user to explore, you know, many of these other uh, settings as, you know, uh, paragraphs there and uh, insert embedded elements and all sorts of things. So as I said, all of the kind of things that you would expect to find in your favorite word processor. Awesome. Well, thank you very much uh, for that again, Stephen. Really appreciate your time today. My pleasure, Tom. And thank you to everyone out there in YouTube world. I really appreciate your time uh, watching our videos and supporting us by you know, commenting, liking, subscribing, and uh, clicking that bell to get notified when we release a new video. Uh, on that note, we'll be back tomorrow with another video. Thanks again, Stephen. Thanks again, everyone. We'll talk to you then.